Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Fishing Fuel Podcast. I've got my really good friend here, as well as employee for Catch the Fever, Nick Dillahay. Nick, how are you doing today? Oh, we're doing good. Just another day. Good, man. I'm glad we were able to come in on this Saturday and get this episode filmed. And uh, Nick is just a great guy. He's been working here at Catch the Fever for how long? Going on two, almost three years. Almost three years. Yep, it's been a while. It's kind of crazy, guys. Nick started out uh, doing order fulfillment, and uh, he came in uh, to the brand with an absolute love for the outdoors. And, uh, I mean, from hunting to fishing, your your grandfather got you into fishing? Oh, yeah, ever since I could walk. That's Couldn't keep me off of it. That's awesome. So this was like a perfect scenario, coming in, working for a fishing rod company, and and I started out at Or Fulfillment, and he started sharing his life uh, in the outdoors on his TikTok channel, which is... It's Catch the Fever Nick. Catch the Fever underscore Nick. Catch the Fever underscore Nick. And I ran across one of his videos one day of him out fishing, crappy fishing. Yep. And uh, I absolutely fell in love with it. I said, Nick, did you edit this? And you said, yeah, I did. And I said, well, dude... You've got to go working for our company, doing the editing and managing our TikTok. So if you're watching this on TikTok, um, if you're a f follower of Catch Fever, this is the guy that makes all of it happen. So Come check me out. Yeah, so you do a really good job, Nick. Well, I appreciate that. I'm super proud of you. And um, yeah, he just, he just continues to do an amazing job for us. But guys, I've got him here for an totally different reason than talking about his employment here at catch the fever i wanted to bring nick on the podcast and ask him some questions about fishing particularly crappy fishing is that probably your 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 most favorite my, that's my number one that's what i grew up doing ever since like i said i could walk i've been catching slabs <laughs> oh yeah and it's funny guys um a few weeks ago I decided to have a company fish off where I told the employees to bring in on your boat, bring your boat to work, and we are going to head out on the water and have a crappy fishing tournament. Now, my boat is decked out to the nines in absolutely everything you could think of. Uh, Peyton, a good friend of mine, Amanda, who is our office manager, that's her husband. They went home, got their boat, and Dick had, uh, Dylan had... <laughs> Nick has his boat. I called you Dylan, Nick, and all the other above. But uh, Nick went went and got his boat, and we all set out on a lake that nobody had fished in a long time. And Nick, you hadn't fished at all. Oh yeah, I've never I've never been to this lake. Uh, it's really new to me. Yeah. I just had a quick, probably fifteen minute glance of the map, and that's pretty much it. So this lake where we were going to have this crappy fishing tournament, we had three boats entered in. And uh, Nick and Dylan were on his boat, and Nick is the only one with live scope. Yeah. And I really don't know if it would have helped me if he didn't have it. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, we fished for half the day. We had a tournament. Yeah, at least four or five hours. I didn't catch anything, nothing at all, which is why I'm the host and not the guest. <laughs> uh, Peyton and Amanda, they were on their boat. I mean, this is probably an eighty thousand dollar setup. Bay boat. Oh, it's dude! Nice. I mean, everything you could have on it. And uh, me and Peyton, we didn't catch anything at all. We were coming into the weigh-ins, and we said we're going to tell Nick we slayed him. So Nick, he 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 comes into the boat. He comes into the dock, and uh, he says, "What'd y'all catch?" And we said, "Oh man, we called him up, Nick. We our live wells were empty." <laughs> And Nick for, begins to tell us what. Yeah, we, we probably caught 30, 40 pretty good-sized fish, you know. We wouldn't have went hungry, that's for sure. Dude, when you said, yeah, we've caught probably 35, I said, oh, my goodness. I knew he was a hammer, but we were the nail. And he hammered us that day. He did. Oh, man. And you had some slabs in there, too. Yeah, I had some good pound, quarter, pound and a half at the biggest. Nothing too huge, but pretty good fish. That's awesome, man. Well, that day he had won like 200 bucks that uh, I had chipped in to pay the winner of this crappy fishing tournament. And we try to have a good time for Catch the Fever. Oh, yeah. uh, we try to pack orders and create products for customers. And here lately with, 
you know, it's it's been crazy. It's been hectic. And uh I thought that would have been a lot of fun to go out there and do a craft show. And Nick, he killed us. He absolutely killed. So I wanted to talk to Nick here. Um Nick is not sitting here as one of our ambassadors or anything like that. He is just somebody that is obsessed with fishing and he can go out, I believe, on just about any body of water and you put him on his boat and he'll find fish. And that's why I want to talk to you, Nick, because there's a lot of guys out there that want to know, you know, how, how do you, how do you target these crappy? What is this time of the year? We're getting into March, Nick. Yep. Coming into March, what is your favorite way to target crappy? What is currently, what's working? So before, before live scope, before all that deal, my favorite way to catch them was when they were spawning up on the banks. That was right. my favorite way up shallow. That was my deal. But ever since live scope came out, I love catching them deep, suspended. That's my deal now. See, that's the opposite for me where I feel really confident in shallow water for yeah. crappy or catfish yeah definitely but you're talking about deep waters now you're you're that's your game yep and deep can mean something way different to somebody else deep to me is very 15 true. plus very that's true deep to me right but um yeah i mean i fell in love with when i went to bugs that's when i really fell in love with and it. when Kerr he Lake. says bug guys he's talking about Kerr lake in virginia it yep. straddles north carolina and virginia yeah See, um, my local home lake, Mayo, those fish are structured fish. They like trees. They like beaver dams. That's how we usually catch them. But when we go to Kerr Lake, I went down through the channel. It was the middle of winter, and those fish were just sitting there, 10 feet on the surface, just one after the other. You just cast them, drop it straight down to them, and pull them straight back. That's hard to beat that. That's a lot of fun. Pick your target. Pick whatever you want. That's awesome. Yep, it is. Fell in love with it. That's cool, man. Well, tell me about the live scope game. All right, let's say me and you or our listeners this weekend, they 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 or this week at some point, they plan on taking their boat to the lake, backing it down the ramp, and heading out. What are you finding right now? What kind of depth? What are you doing to? Let's first start. How are you locating these fish? How are you locating them? How do you know when to stop and start fishing? So, like you said, if you got a live scope, it ain't going to do you no good if you can't find fish. That's right. And the live scope, it'll help you find fish, but it won't like it like you think it will. You got limited distance, 100 feet max. So, what I like to do is get on my phone, get on Avionics. A lot of guys use it. I've seen some of your side podcasts, everybody mm -hmm. using Avionics. And uh, this time of year in particular, these fish are staged up, ready to spawn. This one, you're going to catch your, your real big girls in the back of the creek or in the mouth of it. Just depends on your lake, your water temperature, all that stuff. But um, they're basically staging. They'll either be on some timber or suspended out like I like to catch them. It just depends on your on your lake. Just um, like, like I was talking about mayo, those fish, you could probably travel half a mile and find probably two fish suspended that's about it really those fish hate to suspend i really? do not know why with what's going on right now they just they're you're just not any time them. of the year for that lake on that lake. i have never caught a decent sized crappy in that lake suspended wow and i fished it for at least 10 years wow oh my goodness so you're going out there you said you'll use the the navionics you yep. know the one foot contours i tell yep. people when you're buying a lake maps cards get the one foot contour. Yep. It drains the lake. You're able to see every little hump, every little crevice. So you're using the Navionics to pick a creek. Yep. And decide where you go. Now, Nick, when you're deciding on which creek, is it really long creeks? Are you looking for creeks that have really steep or maybe like a gradual contour line where the fish, when it gets warmer, you feel like they're going to move up. And when it's colder, what are you looking for? I'm, First off, I look at the very back of it, see what the back looks like. Gotcha. If it's shallow for a long time, that means I know them shad are going to be in there. Gotcha. If them shad are in there, then you're going to have some crappy in there, too. Uh -huh. You're going to have crappy, bass, catfish, whatever you want. So you have found this time of year, if when when if in the back of that creek, there's like a, a long period of shallow, consistent water, yep. that's where you find shad. And I know what you're saying is true. 
because um, back in the day when all I did was fish, um, there's a creek on Bugs Island, and I look for the same thing. Yep. And this time of year, the shad are in the back of the creek, yep. and that's where you would throw. Usually somewhere between uh, 10 foot or shallower, consistent all the way back, yep. and we would net crappy. So I know what you're saying is true. Yeah, definitely. And I also look for that shallow water's got to have deep water nearby because those fish are not going to stay back there. If the whole creek's shallow, you might as well not be in there because them fish ain't got nowhere to hide. If it's just the whole creek's 10 or less, they're not going to be in there. Right, right. I mean, they could be. You never know. Fish do some weird stuff sometimes. Fish but do weird stuff. You're exactly most right. Most of the time, they're not going to be in there. Okay, so that's where you know you're going to set out to try to target. Yep. All right. All right, we're in your boat. We're headed back there. Now, how are you scanning for them? And, and deciding, oh yeah, here we are. This is we're gonna put a rock, we're gonna put the trolling motor down. So the first thing I do is I'll uh I won't put the trolling motor down quite yet. I'll uh turn on my back unit, get the side scan going. I'm finding out all the things I do wrong. I'm like, what are we gonna he's hey. like, no, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna go ahead. I'll uh and this is just for a lake I've never been on this Yeah. One. Yeah. But uh I'll turn my side scan on. I'm looking for uh Depending on the lake, if I don't know anything about it, look for structure, ledges, um, bait. And when I say bait, I don't mean perfect circle bait balls. I like the oblongs. Uh, ones. Up. That's how you know fish are feeding. That's right. It don't matter what's feeding on them. You just know fish are feeding. Yep. And uh, I'll scan, and once I see bait, I'll keep going through until I don't see no bait no more. Once you stop seeing bait, you got you a little, probably 100 Two hundred yard little stretch that you know you're going to target. Yeah, that's so that's so good, Nick. Oh my gosh, you you're doing an excellent job. I mean, describing this because people say, "Well, man, I, there was so much bait there. I knew there had to be fish." And it's like, "Well, let me show me a picture of your sonar with the bait." And they show all this this big wall of bait, not broken up. Oh, if, if you're trying to like, if you're catfishing. That's a perfect thing to see. Yeah. Catch them hate, but still. But still, I like to see it broken up, just yeah. like what you're talking about. Yeah. I tell people that say, well, I was all in the bait, and it was just a perfect wall of bait on their on their graph. And I tell them, when you're at the circus, and there's 5,000 people watching the show, everybody's packed in and standing still. Let a lion out of the cage. And let it run you're through the lying. audience. And people are going to scatter. Yep. Take that advice and apply it to fish. These bait fish are all chilling. They're all hanging out. If they're packed in, nothing's happening, and you're marking fish on the bottom, that means that line is in the cage. Yep. But you let those crappies start feeding, they start going sporadic. Yep. yep. So that's a good point. 100%. But um, as soon as I get that that section broke down, I'll uh, as I'm going through to, I will mark these oblong bait balls. And they probably won't be there when you get there, but you'll know the general direction of where they're either heading or going. Or, I love it. And um, I also mark trees. Um, usually when you got your side imaging on, you can see if there's fish on these trees. But usually this time of the year, fish I see on structure are not that big. Right. it will be like eater size fish. Right. And so it was so good with what you were talking about, Nick. I know a lot of guys... They will just start to scan, and they're just looking to see if this is the area they're going to fish, and you're doing that. Yeah. But you are marking active bait balls where fish are targeting, and then you're not just looking for fish, but you're also dropping waypoints through there on brush piles, this. Yeah. So when you get to the end of the activity, you work your way through, you know what to hit. Yep. That's genius, Nick. That's really smart because we as fishermen, we get in a hurry. Or we get excited when we start seeing some activity on the screen, and then we just instantly try to start fishing for them. Yep. And also, for the guys that don't have, you're out there on a little city lake, no electronics, nothing. You got a little John boat. Like, I used to have a little John boat. I, got, I still got a John boat, but it's, it's pretty much decked out now. Yeah, oh, it's, but, it's decked out, guys. That's the baddest 16-foot boat i ever seen, and it whooped my boat. I can tell you that right now. But, uh, yeah, for the guys like that don't have electronics, get there early. You know, you can see the chad flickering on the surface early yeah you get there early and um 
pretty much do some damage in. I love it, Nick. I love it. All right, so we just identified what we're looking for this time of the year on using Navionics, what we're looking for in the back of the creek. You just talked about how we're going to set up and target those fish uh, or 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 lay out a plan to the area to, to start actively breaking them down and, and targeting them. All right, what are we doing next? Are we trolling? Are we pushing? Are we... Um, single pole what's our what's the game plan next so my deal is a single pole mm -hmm. that's my deal but sometimes they don't want the single pole sometimes they want it casted sometimes they want it you know jig over top of them a little bit it just depends on the fish i will cast to them if they're real high in the water column like i've caught some of my biggest fish is sitting two foot under the surface that's cool and you can't get up on them like that especially yeah. the lakes around here because it's so clear right yeah Right. But um, I'll start out single pole because I like single pole. If you want to cast, go ahead and cast. Get get that fish 30, 40 foot from you and take a cast to him. And uh, But you first got to know what a crappie looks like. like right. You have a live scope. A big crappie that I've seen on my unit is like a big old diamond. It'll it'll have What kind of unit do you have? Them. What kind of fish finder do you have? I have a Garmin 93 SV. It's okay. nothing fancy. It's actually... I think it's the best budget one you can have. Well, you are lethal with it. He Nick is a prime example. It doesn't matter if that's a budget one or or not. It goes to show if you understand and take the time to learn your electronics, yeah. you can beat the guy. I don't what Garmin do I have on my boat? You got a one twenty six, I believe. A one twenty six, yeah. So <laughs> you still haven't been fishing in a while. A one twenty six. <laughs> it goes to show that electronics on your boat, you can have every option that's out there and get beat by the guy that understands his graph and knows what he's looking for. Yep. And that's you, you do an awesome job at that. So continue. Yep. And, uh, as I was saying, the big crappy to me look like a diamond and they, most of the time, the white crappy, they sit perfectly still. They don't move that much, but you'll catch them moving sometimes, but they won't move very far. Are you cast into those? I'm starting single pole. Okay. It depends on how they react. If uh, you can see them sitting in the water, once you put your eyes on the screen for long enough, you'll realize how that fish is sitting. And I've noticed I've catch way more fish that are sitting with a little tilt in their head. If they're looking up, I think they're waiting. They're fish. definitely, and and that's that's awesome, Nick. You awesome awesome information. You know, with how the profile that just goes to show electronics yeah. these days. How you're able to see how the orientation of that fish sits. Yeah. When you say, okay, I'm not cast or I'm single poling them, are you jigging over top of them or how are you doing it with a single So what pole? I'm doing, I, I use the uh, 12 foot precision jig rod with a bait caster on it just to hold my line. I don't cast it. I don't do anything. Let out about 12 foot of line to the butt of the rod, depending on how deep that fish is. If he's 12 foot, then I'll take it, ease up to that fish, get about 10 foot away. As slow as I can. You got to do, do this slow because if you pull with up. With it in line, your hand. Yeah, with it in my hand. Have uh, the rod in my right hand and the line in my left and pull it up. Control the depth with my left hand. Dip it down in front of the fish and slowly bring it over his nose. I'm talking a quarter inch away from his nose. Watching this on the live scope. Mm -hmm. So people are using, you know, they're, they're, they're spider rigging, putting the rod in the rod holder. Yeah. You're doing that, but you're holding it in your hand. And I'm con I'm I got full control of that jig, full control. And as soon as that fish notices that jig, I'll pull it away from him. Once you pull it away from him, his instinct is gonna say either I'm gonna eat it or just gonna let it go. So he's got to make up his mind quick or he's gonna lose it. Usually that that just makes him eat it. Dude, that's cool. That's okay. I have not talked to anybody who's crab fishing like that. I know guys are gonna be like, that's how I crab fish. Been doing that for a long time, but I hadn't interviewed anybody who's talked about that. And that is so cool. So you are literally, you've got the, the, the live scope on him. You've got that rod stretched out, 12-foot precision jig. Yep. You've got the line in your hand. You're able to control up and down, and you're easing it right up to him, Slow putting it on his nose. Slow as I can. Is that how you were doing it that day that you caught 35 and all of us caught nothing? Yep. That's yep. a lethal technique. I mean, that goes um, to show you. Yeah. Many of them, I don't even get the chance to pull it away from. Once you got it that close to his nose, he's usually pretty angry at it already. That it's in his face. And he's going to bite it. He's, not all of them will, 
but many of them will. Now, how when you say that, Nick, how long will you give it and mess with that fish? Is, is it when he swims away, you just go pick out another one? I have hooked fish, brought them to the surface, and even picked some out of the water. And they come off, go back in the water. If it was a big enough fish, you can go back to them and catch them. You really can. If you stay on that fish good good enough, it's just, is he worth it or not, really? Right. If it's a small fish, you know, just move on to the next. But if it's a really nice fish and you hook him or miss him or whatever, usually if you give it 20 or 30 seconds, he'll just forget what happened. That's cool. Many people don't realize they can see your boat. They yeah. really can. And they can tell when that water slaps the front oh, of it. Yeah. I have spooked a many a fish just by the jig touching the water. Not yep. the boat. The yeah. jig touching the top of the water, they'll spook. I mean, you can search them down, but I usually just get on another fish. Sure. Plenty sure. Of, a lot of people get hung up on one fish. There's plenty of fish in the lake. You just got to get on them and find them. And the technique that you're doing allows you to almost sound like you can pretty be quick with, I mean, you're, you're just taking shots. I mean, you're yeah. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. You identify a fish over here and then you ease up to it. That don't fish don't bite. You're, you're scanning and looking for another one to pick off based off what you've already mapped out. Yep. And Nick, I, you know, how you have laid it out for what you look for, how you break it down and now how you're targeting them is phenomenal information this will not be a very long podcast but i can already tell you a guy who hears this this is going to help him right out the gate oh yeah him some great information because the technique with the single pole you don't even need rod holders for what you're talking about you just need to have your trolling motor and that 12 foot precision jig pole in your hand and you can go do what you're talking about doing 100 percent. that's cool what kind of line are you using what pound tests and what are you using to do this um me myself so i'll just break down the whole the whole thing like you said 12 foot precision jig rod uh a cheap old bait caster don't matter you just need something to hold your line right 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 i like eight pound super stretch the champion the champion slime line champion super stretch whitey outlaw yep that's his line right there i like that because that precision jig rod's got the backbone, and that rod and that line will have the backbone as well. You can flip. I like to flip fish. I don't really like messing with a net all that much unless I have to. You know what I'm saying? Oh, There's been he's times a I've had to. He's a gambler. I do like to. Oh, oh boy, he's a gambler. There's nothing like flipping a fish, do big you old flip, fish. You, would, you fl would you flip a fish in a tournament? Tournament, I don't know. That's, I got that's a different story. <laughs> but uh, biggest fish I've ever flipped with that rod was two, two eleven, two eleven. Flipping a two and eleven pound fish that speaks for the rod and the line, given how it should. It was a gamble, but it held up. I, it hit literally the side of the boat and flipped in the boat. That's crazy. I didn't realize the fish was that big. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Well, when we were developing the uh, precision troll and the precision rods. We were working with two and a half, three pound sandbags flipping yep. it. So, you know, Nick being here working at Catch Fever, he's got all the inside information on what he can and can't yeah, do. And me and Dylan sit here and abuse these rods. Y'all do, man. We take do. dumbbells, like the rear seat precision jig. We picked up eight pounds of that thing. They took a rear seat precision jig rod <laughs> and picked up eight pounds with it. Yep. Picked so, it up on the table. <laughs> that's, it was crazy. I was not here. They sent me a video. I about had a stroke. <laughs> in my truck driving when I seen it and I just wanted to fast forward to the end and I was like that's the ultimate test right there so For real that's good stuff that's good stuff the demolition Nick over here you know <laughs> well Nick you know kind of uh wrapping it to uh you talked about the rod talked about the line that you use and the success that you have with it and what it's able to do what about the jig do you believe that color plays a factor in crappy jigs or is it more about profile or both? A lot of people, that's like a biggest argument right there. Let's argue about Myself, it. Myself. What's your opinion? Every situation I've been in, usually the first jig I pick up in the day is usually the only jig I use all day. Okay. That's good information. Pen, profile matters sometimes. Like in the spring or early summer. Notice they like a little bit bigger bait. Right. I'd be out there bass fishing with a like fluke or something and catch crappy all day. 
that's a big bait. That's a big bait. And you're catching 10 inch crappie with it. Sure. But, uh, and the water's not as cold. I mean, their metabolism yeah. is wide open. I mean, oh, yeah, they're feet. Springtime, they are wide open. They're putting the feed bag on. But, um, I really love hair jigs. I love really tiny hair jigs. Like a 30 like, seconds out. 30 seconds. Real small. But, um, that's just because I like to, um, fish suspended fish. And now, when you're you're targeting those fish, like in the technique using the single jig pole, is that what you've got tied on? Is like a thirty second out? I have a um, trying to think of the lead. I'll think of it later. But um, yeah, it's a lead like a worm lead. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Like for bass fishing, yep. above the jig, maybe a three eighths ounce something mm-hmm. around there. Two bobber stops, a split shot. It. Yep. Split shot weight. So, yeah, something like that. Just yep. a weight. It really don't matter, I don't think. So here's your jig. Here's the tip of your pole. How far up from the jig is that split shot? About four to six inches. Four to six inches above yep. the jig. Then I'll have two bobber stops underneath the lid and one on top. Okay. So it don't slide. Yep. And uh, that's basically the rig I have on all day long. I rarely retie. Rarely. And the only time I'll retie... If I misjudge a fish and hook one of them pickerel in there. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, for people who don't know, pickerel, they're like pike. They got teeth. Yeah, it's basically a small northern pike. Yeah, that's and they're, it is. they're around here, and you know when you got one, buddy. Yeah. But that's that's pretty good. I mean, that's a testament to the line. Oh, yeah. 100%. So, you're saying you're not even retie. You don't even have to retie. Barely ever. That's fire, dude. Yeah. That's fire. Sure. That's, that's, that's good stuff. Well... I mean, you broke it down, Nick, in a very quick amount of time. You broke down how to identify, how to set up on targeting them, uh, how to actively execute on targeting the fish, the gear you use, and, um, I mean, the electronics that you're using. I mean, we knew this was going to be a pretty fast podcast. We, We came in here, and I was like, Nick. You're a killer crappy fisherman. I, I really think you should be guiding for crappy. So oh, everybody go follow Catch the Fever Nick on TikTok and uh, Nick Dilly on Facebook. I mean, because if he ever decides to guide, this guy is obsessed with the crappy fishing, and he is killer. I'm telling you, the guys have to be good if they're going to be on this podcast, and Nick is a phenomenal angler. And the thing is, you are young, and there's going to be things where that you I had convictions starting out where I said I never do this I never do this I don't have to do this to catch them and then I find out in other circumstances well yeah I do but you are the type of guy where you are you are you are actively successful now and you're learning every day oh yeah I I try and do at least something new every time I go out that's good try and fish this spot I've never been to um see if I can catch this fish this way something different that's, that's right. That's how you improve. That's sure. exactly right. The second you get in a routine is the second you start yeah. rotting on the vine. Yeah. I mean, it is. Just like um, I would have never did as well in that tournament if I would have listened to a lot of what I've people been saying. Like, a lot of people say you got to go at least half a mile from the boat ramp to catch fish. That is false. Yeah, you went right across from the boat ramp. I was literally within sight of the boat ramp. I burned I fifty dollars worth of fuel. I could have used a trolling motor to get to the spot in five minutes. <laughs> That's how close it was. Wow. Yeah. For That's sure. killer. Well, Nick, what would the advice be uh for guys this time of year um uh who's looking to start out actively crappy fishing? Um, you had mentioned some beaver dams and and then the techniques you did. What is some advice that you should give them or that, that that they should be looking for to to try to go catch some crappy this weekend? My advice, I say this. My advice: if you want to go catch your personal best, your best shot at catching your personal best is at least I don't know when you're gonna upload this, but from now to about two weeks from now, beat your banks. Be go close to the bank. And a little away from it, just fan cast with a little small jig. That's how I call my personal best. And mine's not that big. It's two and some change. That's a big crappy. And I'm going to upload this first part of March. First part of March. So you're going to be, the crappier going, the males are going to change color. They're going to be solid black. That's a great time to catch them. My personal best was a male. That, and then males don't get that big. Yeah. Females is usually the big 
crappy you see. But yeah, just find you, look on the map, get you some public access, and find you some cover that's close to the bank, or put you out your own cover. It don't matter. And um, just cast near that, cast around it, find you some flats, and just cast, 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 cast. That's my best advice to give you. Because where I caught my personal best is a public access that anybody can get to. Was you on the bank? I was on a boat. On the boat, yeah. But it's literally a two-minute walk from the ramp. That's that's killer, man. I mean, Nick, you have shown it time and time again. You, I feel like I could make, I could I could say, Nick, go on the other end of the, the lake, and you'd find them. And then you also can go right across the boat ramp from anywhere, break it down, and catch fish there. I think you could do it. I tell you, the craziest experience I've had with this live scope deal is we went to the lake one day, and my girlfriend and her friends were swimming out there and i took that live scope and shined it over there too it was a bunch of fish i don't i think they were crappy i didn't fish for them or yeah. nothing but i had my boat just because we were on the lake and they were all around them dude it was so many fish just in that swimming area it was crazy that's wild everybody they thinks they just kind of go they were good size mm -hmm. that's crazy that's wild it goes yeah. it, it live scope has definitely taught us a lot about it fish. definitely has yes. for sure well, Nick, thank you so much for coming up here on the podcast. I am for sure going to be doing another episode with you because you just packed this podcast full of good information. Uh, guys, make sure you check us out on the Fish and Fuel Facebook page, uh, TikTok, uh, YouTube. And uh, I mean, we are actively on trying to get uh, episodes put back on the Spotify channel so guys can listen to it there as well. But be sure to check us out and uh, for more podcasts, especially with Nick here, because we're going to cover even more. This was just a short tutorial on how to get on some crappy this weekend from a guy who could go out there right now and just hammer them. So we hope you found this uh, podcast uh, educational. Nick, thank you so much for being here. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, guys, we will catch you next time on the Fish and Fuel podcast.